what is matter and what is its source. Uh, and elucidation of the nature of space, as it turns out, uh, holds the key to understanding the nature of matter and its source. Uh, we see that an inherent energetic structure, and as we will explore more in section two of the course, uh, lesson two, um, uh, the, the entanglement nexus of the unified space memory network, uh, we'll, we'll see that as well, an informational structure and dynamic of space itself gives rise to a specific geometry and dynamic that becomes the identifiable substance uh, of uh, physical systems, what we call particles. In short, the way that space is curved and spun, you know, the torque, the spin, uh, and its, its curvature uh, give rise to kind of the, the uh, illusionary uh, uh, experience of uh, physicality. It's, it's like there's something solid there, there's matter there. Um, but you know, it's it's this uh, dynamic, this this uh, spin and, and curvature that is giving that uh, property. Um, so it, you know, kind of going back to that that initial statement, uh, there's nothing in the world except empty curved space. Uh, of course, empty space. What does that mean? But uh, so uh, the. Uh, the, these particles are only uh, excitations of the ubiquitous energetic structure of space. Uh, so all the, the physical stuff is fundamentally ether. Uh, we are ethereal beings um, because we're made of, of matter. Matter is made of particles and particles are uh, this, this geometry and informational uh, dynamic of space. Uh, so this has, uh, th that point uh, becomes uh, very uh, important um, because, especially when we get into lesson four, uh, when we start looking at uh, sentience and um, uh, intelligence in the universe, uh, awareness, uh, because of uh, the idea of uh, dark, uh, um, Cartesian dichotomy between this uh, seeming mental realm and a physical realm. That, that there's these two separate domains. Uh, one is the, the mental qualia of subjective experience that exists apart and independent of the quote unquote physical world. Uh, and the physical world is, is just th this inanimate, unfeeling, uh, unaware uh, matter. Uh, well, if we see that, that our, our conception of what is and isn't physical uh, is misguided, uh, our common sense experience of this uh, is uh, not at, uh, getting it entirely correct. Uh, so this becomes important in, in seeing um, uh, the, the relationship of mind uh, to matter uh, and vice versa, which we'll, we'll get into in, in particular in uh, lesson four. Uh, but uh, the, the answer to the question, what is matter and what is its source, uh, as it turns out, uh, was simply stated uh, by uh, Nikola Tesla. Um, all matter comes from a primary substance, the luminiferous ether. Uh, so a disclaimer, uh, it, it's, it's kind of a, a verboten term to use a, a ether and luminiferous ether. Uh, it, well, it, it certainly has been uh, over the last hundred years in science because it was uh, erroneously assumed that uh, this luminiferous ether uh, had been disproven. Uh, and if not disproven, that uh, it was unnecessary uh, for any models uh, of physics to, to describe behaviors and, and characteristics of, of the physical world. So it was, it, it probably doesn't exist, it's not needed. Uh, but as uh, we're finding out, uh, as science is, is learning more, as we're learning more, uh, there is an ether. And you can even find some um, 
pretty uh, uh, prominent physicists, Nobel laureates, uh, uh, Frank Wilczek, for instance, who, who use specifically that term uh, when they're describing the nature and source of matter. It's, it's uh, ether. Uh, so this is simply stated, but uh, it, it, the how, how does this happen? Uh, so it's the elucidation of the details is where we get into some uh, extremely interesting properties of the nature of this uh, ether uh, or space or the quantum vacuum, whatever term you might like to use for it. Uh, and this brings us back to, to John Archibald Wheeler uh, and quantum geometrical dynamics. Um, so this was, uh, Wheeler was uh, one of the first to apply the principles of quantum mechanics to general relativity's geometrization of space-time. Uh, he demonstrated the, the quantum structure of space at the micro scale, uh, what he referred to as quantum space-time foam. Um, returning again to, to this slide. Um, so the applications of, of quantum mechanics to general relativity uh, in part, it, 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 in an endeavor to develop one of the first unified field theories, uh, led Wheeler to uh, the approach to unification known as uh, quantum geometrical dynamics. Uh, so this uh, led Wheeler to, to coin some uh, interesting uh, terminology, which he was always uh, really great at doing. It's become the the, the uh, terminology he's coined for many of these these novel concepts has become part of the standard lexicon uh, of science to describe them. Uh, so, um, quantum field theory and general relativity uh, can be explained following a unified mechanism. Uh, the geometrical structure of multiply connected space. Uh, in quantum geometric dynamics, all particles and forces can be explained purely from the geometrical structure of space and the informational dynamic of their interrelationships. Uh, and, and for the more technically uh, inclined among us, you may note that this is uh, resurfaced in some of the most advanced theoretical models that are being worked on right now, like uh, conformal field theory and uh, anti-de Sitter uh, holographic correspondence, uh, which we look at a, a result of that um, in terms of uh, the, the quantum uh, space-time foam, uh, the connectivity of space and its relationship to quantum properties, uh, particularly like entanglement. Um, so um, uh, the, the space-time geometry uh, that, that uh, underlies uh, quantum entanglement and really how uh, entanglement glues space together. Uh, so space is fundamentally entangled, which is one of the reasons why when you bring a pair of particles uh, to the vacuum state, uh, they become entangled. Even if they've never interacted, you, you, if they can be in uh, uh, at separate locations on the earth uh, and you bring them into the vacuum state in a particular way, you can get them entangled. Uh, that's something that we'll be uh, looking at as well. Uh, it's called um, uh, entanglement farming. Uh, entanglement harvesting. You can harvest entanglement from the vacuum, this entanglement nexus. Uh, so note the term uh, geon, uh, and this is a really interesting concept because um, that was uh, uh, his term given for the idea of a, uh, a gravitationally confined uh, energetic object. Uh, so it, it, a, um, a massless object that due to its own uh, self energy um, adopts a, a very specific uh, gravitational uh, confinement that is a, a geometry of space uh, that in uh, Archibald's 
uh, summation gives rise to matter. Uh, and so th this is another term that comes from the uh, quantum geometrodynamics that is uh, mass without mass, uh, charge without charge. So, you know, those, those are some fundamental properties. How, how do you describe mass and charge? Uh, this is one approach uh, to do so. Uh, and so uh, essentially uh, you can cons even consider like uh, light. Uh, you get enough light in a single location because uh, light has energy. It curves space time. Uh, if you get enough of it, the, the light will uh, try to travel in a straight line, but it's curving space time so strongly that it curves back on itself. It starts to form this torus, this toroidal geometry in space. Uh, and you get all of a sudden this, this boundary condition, this, this gradient in the space-time structure. Uh, and, and this is probably uh, fairly reminiscent uh, to, to uh, th those who followed uh, the work here um, with uh, double torus geometry uh, and its underlying uh, uh, cuboctahedral uh, symmetry. Uh, so the, the uh, 64 tetrahedron grid and the uh, double torus dynamic. Uh, and when you're looking at that in terms of these geons, uh, you can begin to uh, uh, explain a uh, source of, of matter uh, and uh, how it comes about and how we have an experience of the physical.